Hey guys, it is back once again. Uh, this is going to be part two of my ABC handicapping um, and sort of uh, ticket structure um, video series here. Uh, idea in this one is uh, I got some feedback and thank you very, very, very much for the feedback. It makes my life much easier. Uh, feedback was that uh, people were wondering, gee, can I use ABC handicapping? Uh, to in a thirty to fifty dollars sort of a sequence. I don't I don't have the kind of money to make a three hundred dollar play like the example I gave. Totally can. Um, and what I would say about that is, if you're going to use it in that kind of a sequence, make sure you have an opinion. And uh, so I'm going to play around with Saratoga, the uh, Wednesday, August twenty first card. I have a couple of opinions in the early sequence here. And uh, I want to use some ABC structure to, uh, to leverage some opinions. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up Ticketmaker. And of course, it's going to be stupid on me. Let's open up Ticketmaker here. There it goes. Um, and I'm going to select today's date, which is or the, should say the day of the, ra the race date, uh, which is August 21st. And we're going to create a new ticket. And we're going to do a second race. We're going to do a pick three. Um, the base bet here amount is going to be a dollar. And I'm going to have a budget of $50 for this sequence. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll play around with the sequence a little bit. So I handicapped this last night. And so I'm going to kind of speed cap it with, uh, with everybody there or everybody watching. Um, my opinion is going to be predominantly in this second race. This horse south of shore, um, eight to five on the morning line, Lascano up. Now it's Chad Brown horse, um, and Lascano being up for Chad seems like a weird thing until you look at his odds. Lascano's hit at 38% up for Chad in the past year. Um, so again, really stupid stats. If you look at this race, um, it is an optional 25, or optional claiming 25. Uh, so this horse is actually coming out of a $79,000 allowance non-winners of one. Um, so it, uh, it's a bit of class relief here. Um, actually, quite a lot of class relief. And the horse threw up an 81 fig. If you look through the rest of this field, no one has a fig even close to, uh, even close to that horse. Now, there are a couple little things that make you a little scared in here. But uh, the, another interesting thing about with South of Shore is if you look at the company that she's been keeping, you may have heard of this horse called Dunbar Road, who won the Alabama last Saturday. Um, also, this other horse called Coach Rocks. Um, yeah, the, she's been keeping some really tough company. Um, and I think she's, she's probably a pretty solid horse. Obviously, uh, you know, there's a number of layoff lines in here. Um, some very long layoff lines this February of 18 to March of 2019. You know, 13 month layoff. So she, she's had some issues. Um, there's been some problems. I don't think she's here just to run. I think she's probably for real. Um, I haven't seen works, and I will probably update this video again once I see works. But my assumption here is that she's probably a pretty solid horse and a horse I can get a little cute around. So I'm going to use her as my lone A in the first leg of the uh, of the sequence. She's 8 to 5 on the morning line. I expect her to be closer to 3 to 5 when they actually pop the gates, um, assuming her works make sense. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. and I'm, I apologize you're not going to be able to see this horse super well. This is smooth with a kick. Um, I have a personal thing, and, I, and a number of people in Discord do. I don't love to bet horses that were last out winners, that, bro that broke their maiden last out and are now going first time versus winners. But of the other horses in this race, this horse has the best figs, a consistently improving buyer's form. JJ stays on board here. Um, some things to like. It's the other Chad, and let me, I know we talked about speed before, so I'll give you a, a real quick tutorial here. Um, time form figs. If you look at South of Shore, she's definitely a closer. She needs some pace set up in front of her. She's going to get some pace set up in front of her. Um, she's going to have, first off, Bolera, the Todd Pletcher horse, who's got a 91 early pace fig. And she's also going to have Smooth of the Kick, my, as with a 96 fig. My assumption is that Smooth of the Kick is in here to set up the one. So there's a chance that maybe Smooth of the Kick doesn't stop and the horse and the track is a little speed favoring. I think it's slim, but I'm going to use her as a C. 
Um, I'm going to put no bees in there. So the idea here is I'm going to be pretty leveraged in this first race. I'm, I'm getting pretty cute. Um, we're going to go to the third, and this race to me is an absolute cluster. I haven't seen works, but my feeling here is that this is going to be just a wide open race. The one horse that makes some sense on numbers is this one horse here. Obviously, it ran a four. Let's just ignore that. Um, I, I think the horse probably had it was just had some issues first time out. Uh, I haven't really watched the race, but Asmussen horses tend to come back for their second race, run a lot better. Um, 3rd of August, the 20th of August, horse said so they had some time to get some works in. Um, you see some works here on the 19th. Um, I'm assuming that it was probably a gate break issue and they have sort of worked through those issues. Um, that horse is the one that has numbers behind it. And when I mean numbers, if you were to look through here, um, Asmussen has great stats. You know, Maiden second stat at 21, Maiden special to Maiden claim at 17%. He's 22% with uh, two-year-olds. Now, the reason I don't love this horse, and I think it'll take a lot of money, but I still don't love it, is we're running today at five and a half furlongs. The inside post with Maidens at five and a half furlongs has been terrible. Um, quite honestly, inside post has been bad all meet. You don't want to be on the rail. But specifically with Maidens, um, I never have liked the inside post. I think those horses get a little squeezed. They get uncomfortable. They don't want to make a move on, on you know, early, or they don't want to make a move through those skinny rail spots. And the horse isn't like a crazy early speed horse. So it's a horse I kind of want to fade. Um, the horses I want in here are, I want some of the four, and I'll give you the, the reasons why here. Uh, Gary Gillo, horse ran fairly decent first time out, uh, and you're getting a rag taking them out this time, blinks go on, so I expect the horse to even have more forward speed in these five and a half furlong races. Uh, the horse ran a 85 early speed first time out. These uh, five and a half furlong races, uh, you want to be forwardly positioned, they don't tend to melt very often. They don't tend to sort of back up. Uh, the five, Brady's Place, also George Weaver trained. Now you're going to look here and you're going to say, well, wait a second. George Weaver is only, um, what? He's 11% with firsters. Debut maiden claims he's 9%. Sounds like a terrible stat, right? If you do a little further digging here, though, you'll note down in the notes here that uh, George is, you know, he's obviously not having the best of me, but over the past five years, George Weaver is three for nine with a three dollar and thirty two cent roi with two-year-old firsters in mating claiming dirt sprints um that's a stupidly awesome statistic yes small sample size but that's a horse i think you have to use as um you know as an a horse and manny going up for george weaver is not something i would ever be scared of he uses manny quite a lot and him and manny have great success together um, the other one, and again, sorry, you're not going to be able to see it the best, the seven, Shackleford's Joy, D. Wayne Lucas. Um, it's odd for me, and the reason, this is one of those horses that sort of is like, like, wait a second, something just feels off here. What feels off to me is, first thing, I like Shackleford's, but D. Wayne, and I don't think I can, maybe I can move this around so you guys can see it. Here we go, let's do this, and I'll move my, my video up. Um, D. Wayne ran this horse, it was a race which was taken off from the turf. Um, and yet second time out he's keeping the horse on the dirt um, yeah he's terrible made in second timers yeah he's terrible made in special weight to maiden claim but horse is getting Lasix for the first time so maybe there was a breathing issue here um, and the horse was three to four wide in pursuit and then tired late so he showed speed was up on the pace and then faded that's actually a pretty good bet back angle that's something that doesn't scare me as much uh, so that's another horse I want to use as, as a, uh, I want to use in here as a, um, an A horse. So I talked about those two. Those are going to be the four, the five, and the seven. And we're going to make those all A horses. And because of the fact that I'm going to play A's with both of my B's, I'll show you what I mean in the next leg, um, I want the one, the two, the three, and the six, all is Bs. No one works on any of these horses. Some of this might shuffle around a little bit, but the idea here is that I like those horses the most, but I don't really hate anybody else. Um, there's no horse here that jumps off the paper at you. There's no horse here that looks like a monster, um, especially in these, you know, these drop-down races. So I want to buy the field, and I want the chance that maybe I can catch a price. Something like this six happens to win, um, you know. 
uh, even the, or the three at you know fifteen to one. You can catch one of those prices. I think uh, you know this would pay huge, and this is putting us in a structure where we can do that. So let's go on to the fourth race. The fourth race is the John's Call, uh, which is a st which is a mile and five eighths on the turf stakes race, um, and the horse to be in here is Highland Sky. Um, Highland Sky, a lot of big figs. Horse has been running well. Now the problem with High or Highland, sorry, I think I did say a mile and five eighths on the turf, um, and it's on the melons or the outer turf. But yeah, Highland Sky is the horse to be in here. Um, big figs, everything looks great. Problem with Highland Sky is that Highland Sky does not like to win races. Highland Sky is four for twenty-four. Now Highland Sky is getting some massive class relief here. If you look at all of these races here, look at this whole chunk here: um, G twos, G ones, and we're dropping down to the John's Call, which is a hundred thousand dollar overnight stake. So this horse is getting just absolute massive class relief. Maybe he's just not good enough. He seems like a horse that likes to try. He seems like a horse that likes to, you know, really put put out a maximal effort all the time here. Um, so I'm really hoping that uh, it's just a factor of, um, you know, that he's good enough um, and just needs that class relief. Because I would imagine the last time you see him winning here was this prep race, which was an optional 80, ran a huge fig, won by a neck. Uh, he does need a little pace set up in front of him. I think he's probably going to get it here. And I think this is, you know, this race is going to be sim similar to that optional 80 and the fact that they're probably pretty similar classes. Yes, it's an overnight stakes, but. Um, so he's definitely going to be an A horse for me. So let's do a little more digging through here. Um, the other horses in here that were interesting to me were it was Red Knight. And Bill Mott trained horse. You see Jose Ortiz picked up, it stays on this mount, if I remember right. Oh, sorry, the other logical in here was Nakamura. Jose won last out on Nakamura at an optional 62, but decides, hey, I'm going to jump back over to this Bill Mott horse. To me, that makes me think that Red Knight is better than Nakamura, and I like Nakamura. So um, I'm going to use Red Knight as well as an A-horse. And also in this race, I had mentioned Nakamura already. I want Nakamura as a B-horse. And what that'll and what that means is that I want a little bit of Nakamura, but I think the one and the five are the better of the two horses in this race. So I'm not getting crazy creative here. Um, I'm not getting, you know, doing anything sort of weird. Uh, one second, I just want to look at one other thing. Eh, okay, cool. And so I think that's probably how my structure ends up being. Um, let's do a little bit. And cool. Um, the other horses in here that's sort of a wild card, and I will, I'm not going to, for my example, I'm not going to use the horse, but you definitely could if you play it. Let me look at works and I'll kind of rework some of this stuff. Is this three horse, Redisian? Um, horse flew over from England to run in a jumps race, which he won at Saratoga. So you know he gets across this surface, gets across turf well, um, obviously he's acclimating, second time Lasix. Um, gets Vargas, which is an odd sort of mount, but, you know, Vargas is one for two with me, and I guess that's not a bad thing. Um, the horse is a massive wild card in here. I, I don't know if this horse should be 50 to one or she should be two to one. And I think there's only two ways that it comes out. He's either 50 to one or two to one. He's, he's a weird horse in this race. Um, but he's usable. He would be the other horse that I could say, gee, if, in, if I want to be a little cute in here, and maybe I'll do this for this example, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I think that Red Knight is better than Nakamura, specifically because of the jock move. So if I'm saying that Nakamura is a cut below anyways, maybe we, maybe we don't want cop Nakamura. Let's go in here and let's grab this wild card horse, this, this you know sort of British invader um, who's coming in, and we'll, we'll use this uh, the three horse here, Red Asian. Um I think, you know, and again, I do think there could be a chance that, you know, maybe this horse is actually live. Uh, come on, formulator, stop being so slow. One second, one second here. So, let's get up here, this three. Uh, 
Uh, that's Turco Bravo slowing the whole thing down here. Now, we, they are expecting some rain during the day today. Today is Tuesday. Um, and there's a chance that this could come off. It, if it does, I don't necessarily know if I love Turco Bravo, but I definitely don't hate him in here. Um, and I'll have to play with it at that point. Turco Bravo with his million starts is making uh, DRS Formulator be a little slow, so there's where to see him. Um, and this is that jump source, and I'll put it down. So you can see last time he ran a two, and a, two mile and a 16th hurdles, um, which he won. So here's how my structure works out with the ABCs, because it's predominantly an ABC structure game. Um, I have a lot of leverage here on this one. I had another opinion that I want to fade the inside post with a horse I think it could be short priced, but I think that race is pretty flat. And I'm leveraging some opinions here. So I, here's what DRF did with a, or here's a, what Formulator, or here's what Ticketmaker, I mean, did with a $50, um, my $50 play here. We have, this goes all A, I end up with a $3 base bet. So a $3 pick three, the one over the four, five, seven, over the one, five for a $3 base bet. So if this chalks out and I catch a couple favorites in here, I have a $3 win bet, or a $3 pick three bet. More than likely, even if it's chalky, this is gonna pay 25 bucks. Um, and for a pick three, it would be like a $75 pick three. I get my money back and I actually make 50% on this. Let's say I can catch one price. These price ones are both $2 wagers. I'm betting that you know that comes back into again you know you're talking um, maybe a, a fifty dollar pick three so we'd be in that hundred dish dollar one hundred twenty five dish dollar range nice little bit of profit not a problem there if we can get this double B that wild card English, British horse happens and maybe we catch a price in this could be pay four five six hundred dollars very easily it's not a crazy complicated sequence but you get a couple bombs you get a couple of prices if you can get away from favorites and one thing you have to remember about favorites is that most people are not doing multi tickets like this they're using a favorite so they're trying to use the one is probably the favorite which we're using but they're going to try to go to the third or the fourth and use the favorite you can get away from a couple of favorites and even only catch the second horse on the board. It massively ramps up how much the payout is because of the fact that so many people are using them and trying to key around and be cued around favorites. Um, so that we have less bet size here, meaning less leverage on that double B ticket um, because it's gonna pay more. It may pay for a dollar, it may pay you know, $300 or something. Um, and I can see that happening. And then also we have this one. If the one horse doesn't win the first leg and the, and the five does, we still have a ticket that can catch that five, catch a little bit of a price, and we were still alive to a three by two to get the last two legs open. So we've given ourselves a lot of options. We've given ourselves a structure that wouldn't normally happen. We, we normally wouldn't play this as a caveman. Now, if we did play it as a caveman, we wanted all this coverage, we would be two by seven by three. Um, so that would be what, $42 for a $1 ticket. So my actual cost is I'm only spending eight more dollars, but I'm getting three times leverage on my all A's, double the leverage on a single B, and effectively the same ability to catch a price in the, th in the um, third race or catch a price in the fourth race that I would with an all caveman ticket yet I have leverage on top of it. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I will probably come back through, and I know somebody had asked about workout reports, so I'd like to look at what workout reports look like. I will have them tomorrow evening. Uh, I will take a look at, the, and uh, I will look at workout reports, and maybe we'll move some of this around. Maybe this one isn't for real, or maybe one of these uh, horses I have as a B needs to be an A because it's got some big works behind it. Um, I'll show the, the version of their, all workout reports are is somebody who is very subjective, watches the horse move, they watch them work, and they say, geez, that horse is in good form, it's running well now, um, he looks like he's got a lot of energy, he's set up to run a really big race, those types of things. Um, so put some comments down below, what else you'd like to see, what additional pieces you'd like to see of this whole section. Uh, let me know if this made sense or if things were a bit murky, and I'll uh, expand on them. I'll definitely come through and do another pass with workout reports so everybody can sort of see what it looks like workout reports over the top of this same structure and i'll end up saving this guy here for me and um yeah good luck oh yeah and hop on discord or hop on reddit and uh, hit me up 
And uh, with any feedback, I, I definitely appreciate the feedback. This is this doing a video thing is sort of new for me, so I want to get a feel here. And uh, good luck at the races.